Hey, hey, and welcome back to another video. And in this one, I'm going to be going to stay at the hotel that has banned bloggers and YouTubers. I'm gonna grab my stuff and head to the airport and jump on a flight from Bucharest here in Romania to Dublin, Ireland and go straight and see what happens at this hotel since um, hmm, bloggers and YouTubers are banned. So about three weeks ago, a British YouTuber and influencer wrote to a Dublin hotel requesting that in exchange for some exposure on her uh, social media platforms like YouTube and Instagram. That's pretty, I guess, standard in the influencer industry. But what I noticed about the letter she sent, she did not address the hotel by its name. And uh, she described the hotel as stunning. Now, the manager of the Charlesville Lodge Hotel, uh, White News Cafe in Dublin, Paul Stenson, he wrote a one could say rather cutting reply, quite a biting email. So basically this huge Twitter storm erupted with a lot of people attacking the YouTuber whose name is Elle Darby. She then went and made a reply video where she basically attacked the hotel owner, uh, defended herself. I don't feel like I did anything wrong in that. The White Moose also replied with their own set of videos. So this went on and on and it's been known as Bloggergate whole scandal. So I'm really intrigued and excited to see what's going to happen. I fall into the category of people that he has apparently banned from the hotel. So let's see what happens when I show up with my vlogging camera uh, tonight in Dublin. So yeah, should be interesting. Lots of stuff. Thanks a million. Perfect. So I'm here. I'm in the hotel the band YouTubers. Elderly, I think you need to raise the standards of the hotels that you send these emails to. I mean, the idea is this is a luxury hotel and luxury hotel room is a joke. This is fucking funny. This is where I'm fucking staying. Actually, I feel like I should send you a bill uh, for having such poor taste. So after the scandal broke out, Paul Stenson, the manager of the White Moose and Charlesville Lodge Hotel, he sent L. Darby in invoice for over 5 million euros, claiming that she owed him that amount of money in terms of free publicity that the whole scandal had actually given her. Let's see how it goes tomorrow and let's see how they react when I go downstairs with this big baby, this big blogging camera. So, good night. So, speaking to you live from the Charlesville Little Lodge Hotel here. One thing I do have to say actually, and I do have to compliment the hotel on, is the speed of their Wi-Fi. As I'm here uploading, you can see some of the footage already <laughs> that I've shot here. So that's great, that is a big plus. I'm a big fan, of course, of high-speed internet. This is probably though the least impressive room I've stayed in in a while. Uh, it's bloody small, man. Uh, I did only pay 44 euros a night, 15 euros for breakfast. That would explain why, because we're in Dublin, it's quite an expensive city. El Darby must have literally spammed every hotel in the city if she also included this hotel. Stunning, stunning, <laughs> stunning, El Darby, please. That's what happens if you spam. Anyways, the breakfast was decent, um, and as I said, the, the Wi-Fi, which is something that's really important to me, is also top, so it's actually not so bad for my uses. Okay, let's go and take a little walk around the hotel. <laughs> so firstly, the lounge is not normally like this. Uh, we had an inspection here last week. And that's why there are flowers, fresh flowers in the lounge. They're not normally here. So it's looking a little bit nicer than it usually did. It does. Now, Charleville Lodge is by no means stunning. It is a very budget lodge. So if you're not impressed by uh, Connor's room, well, you know, what did you expect? You know what I mean? We're not a fucking five-star hotel. What irked you so much about that email in particular? Because you must receive like similar emails like all the time, surely. We receive, I'd say, once one, one a month or two a month. The ones I like are the ones that say, I've booked a room, 
I've paid for it and you know, I, I am a YouTuber or an Instagrammer. I will put photos or videos of your property up on my channel. Uh, is there any chance of an upgrade? And I'll say, absolutely. You've paid for your room. I'll give you, I'll even put a bottle of Prosecco in your room. I'll, put, yeah, I'll give you everything. I'll give you free breakfast, free parking, everything because you've actually paid for something. But if you come to me and say, I'll put the thing in your video for free accommodation, if she had approached it in a more business-like manner, actually addressing me by name rather than hi there, uh, and said, look, this is a business deal. Let's put the cards out on the table. Let's do business. I might have looked at it differently. But the fact that she didn't even know who she was talking to, uh, had done no research on us whatsoever, and was asking for something for free without even giving me an idea as to what the ROI might be, uh, that pissed me off. You seem in the past to have taken uh, issue with some of the demands of some customers with respect to being vegan, yeah. gluten-free, uh, being a snowflake, uh, being a feminist maybe. Uh, can you uh, yeah, elaborate a little bit on uh, the policy of the hotel with respect to certain demographics? Well, honesty is our best policy. Yeah. You know, uh, we're not controversial, we're honest. Because I have an honest view in a PC world where we're not allowed to actually speak our mind, I'm labelled controversial, even though all I am is honest. I have nothing against vegans. I have nothing against the gluten intolerant, although I do believe they're suffering from a make-believe disease. I have nothing against feminists. The only women I do hate are the people who think that all men hate women. But in general, there's no minority I actually hate. Uh, but the people I do hate are those who are entitled, the entitled. Right? And it just so happens that the different minorities tend to be quite entitled. A vegan came in here one morning with her meat-eating boyfriend and she happened to be German, just happened to be German, looking at the menu, uh, I'm vegan, what have you for me? And I said, well, we can do a we can do you a vegetarian breakfast. Yeah, well, is that all? What about me? Me, 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 as if she was the only person in the restaurant. And I said, well, look, like, if you'd given us 24 hours notice, we would have been able to do anything for you. But uh, you, you kind of have come in at the, at the last minute and, and looked at me as if I had 10 heads because we don't have 50,000 items on, your, on our menu to suit your idiosyncratic dietary requirements. So I put those words into a Facebook post and the vegan community erupted. And the, the, the cafe was bombarded with one-star reviews and World War V uh, began. They didn't understand the word idiosyncratic, they mistook that word to be idiot. Idiotic. Idiosyncrasy for anyone who's watching doesn't speak English the first language, just means like individual characteristics, something peculiar to someone. Yeah. It's not negative or positive, it's just a matter of fact, and it certainly does not mean idiotic. <laughs> different, different <laughs> dietary requirements. Yeah. Then the gluten intolerant one, okay. Mm. So a girl came in and she said, uh, your pancakes, are they gluten free? And we said, oh no, you're celiac, is it? No, no, I'm not celiac. Uh, I just don't, I don't eat gluten. All right, I'm afraid they're not gluten free. <laughs> oh, well, look, I'll have them anyway. The fact of the matter is that less than 1% of the population suffer from a very uh, rare autoimmune disease called celiac disease, which is very, very serious. And it actually makes people who have genuine celiac disease to eat gluten has a serious, serious effect on them. Those who suffer from the imaginary make-believe disease that is gluten intolerance, there is no real beneficial or detrimental effect on them if they eat gluten. They are just following a fad. They see that uh, Khloe Kardashian has given up gluten because apparently she's going to lose weight, which is absolute bullshit. Uh, but they, they buy into that and they believe it. Then the third one was the feminists. I have no problem with people breastfeeding in the cafe. You know, humour is our best policy here. So I said once that breastfeeding is perfectly fine in the cafe, but as you're bringing your milk, uh, you know, you can't be bringing in your own milk when we have perfectly good milk here. So the corkage charge will apply, five euro for one breast or 750 for two. And the feminists were up in fucking arms. Maybe these two girls, do you, uh, do you find that funny or offensive? It's funny, yeah. Yeah, There's always a small cohort or, or, or portion of the population who will take offense to anything. Any of these minorities, whether it's feminism, uh, veganism, or gluten intolerancism, they will speak about your business at the end of the day. So we kind of use them as our sales reps. Yeah. So that's that's the policy on all of that. I read Paul's um, kind of synopsis of what happened during Bloggergate when he had this argument, obviously, with uh, dispute with 
uh, um, and you analyzed it and you, you explained uh, the value of actually basically pissing off uh, certain vocal uh, groups who take issue with, uh, with, with your policy. So it's quite a smart um, social media strategy. We've had over 50,000 reviews written on a cafe that has been open uh, since 2015. Uh, it's now 2018, we have 35 seats. If you do the maths there, uh, it, it's a little bit odd uh, to have 52,000 reviews. You know, they're all, like, I would say, I wouldn't say 10% of the people have actually been here. <laughs> okay. You know? So that just goes to show how, I suppose, inaccurate, mm -hmm. unreliable, uh, Facebook reviews are, whatever about TripAdvisor. You also, uh, you also have your own YouTube channel. You have one particular uh, video about influencers and what you see is what's going to be the death of influencer marketing. There's a lot of websites now that'll sell you followers. They'll even like your post for you. I hardly thought there was that many Filipinos and Finglets, did you? Do you think that uh, influencers uh, or social media influence is something that's going to last in the long term? What are your own thoughts on this? I just don't think there's much transparency in the whole thing. I think that if I'm an influencer and I'm sent a pair of shoes from I don't know, Shoe or Aldo or somebody like that, uh, and I'm paid 5,000 euro to say they're great, I'll probably say they're great. I think integrity is something that's very difficult to guard against with influencers because, yeah, they, they have a conflict of interest. They're giving something for free. They will get more free things if they continue to say positive, uh, if they give positive reviews all the time. This is a problem uh, for sure. Correct. And like with the whole SMI girl who won't be named, uh, if I had given her that free room for five nights, would she have been honest in her review? Would she have, you know, spoke her mind, spoken her mind in the video? Probably not. Would she have still said it was stunning? Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> she probably would have, even though she's effectively lying. If that social influencer came back and paid for a room, would you, uh, would you welcome her with open arms? If, any, if anybody came in and paid for a room, I'd welcome anybody. Yeah. Everybody is welcome as long as you have the money, as you have the money to pay for the room. You know, I don't, we don't ban anybody from, from this place. You just have to have the money to pay for a room. Just don't ask me for a free room. Everybody watching this, come in and stay with us, but pay your way. Bye-bye. <laughs>now that I've survived or even thrived at the hotel that banned YouTubers and bloggers, it's time to digest the last 24 hours. So on the one hand, L Darby wrote a reasonable business proposal for free or discounted accommodation in exchange for exposure on her social media account. So this is something that's pretty normal, I think, in the social influencer world. However, this was a copy and paste job. She didn't even include the name of the hotel and she falsely described it as Stunning. Moreover, she didn't explain the value that her exposure on her social media accounts would bring to this particular hotel. She doesn't have a travel channel. She's not focused on Dublin or Ireland. So I don't really see the value that being in her social media would bring to a hotel in Dublin, especially because her target demographic seems to be young, uh, young women, young girls. So I'm not sure, did she just write to scores of hotels in Dublin, the same email looking for basically a free hotel room? Clearly this is incompetent because she could have just gone to couchsurfing.com and found a host who was willing to take her in for free without her even having to take Made a photo and posted on her lousy Instagram in return. L, you would know these travel tips if you had signed up for my free travel training. Link in the description below. Next, she jumped up the opportunity for more media exposure that this email had given her. Well, she is a social media and she's shamelessly played the cyber bullying card when she was not being bullied by the hotel. She'd of course received a lot of hurtful comments if you're a snowflake, but that's just part of the course of being on YouTube. People say terrible things about you all the time, unfortunately. On the other hand, Paul Stenson of the White Moose a Cafe has been highly skeptical of what he describes as amateur influencers and had in the past made uh, some professional level YouTube videos on his channel that uh, mock these uh, social media influencers because they show an unrealistic view of their lifestyles and predicting that their influence will be short Live. This makeup brush gave me herpes and six kids died trying to make it. Who gives a fuck once I'm getting paid? When you get your free stuff, you have to put hashtag SP and hashtag ad in front of everything. So, was 
his attempt to obscure her name and refer to only as SMI or social media influencer genuine? Or did he plan to expose a suitable social media influencer whenever he or she were to write to him? He certainly had his merch ready pretty quick. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for that. I may not have gotten a free room, but I have gotten a free t-shirt. So thanks again for the kind of free t-shirt, Paul. One thing is for sure is that Paul Stenson is a social media genius. So write me in the comment section below what your thoughts are on social media influencers, whether they uh, should ask for or even receive free stuff. Is it really free? Do they provide value? Are they just some freeloaders? If you're new here to the channel, consider subscribing if you are into traveling better, learning languages, or even a bit of romance, especially in Eastern Europe. Whack that subscription bell if you're really into it. And if you're not, well, you're here at the end of the video. So if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Slon live.